something new with the vlog. I'm hoping I can uh, find a quiet spot where people let me start the camera and, and spend some time. I want to do something that you see car magazines do. A lot of times a car magazine will get a car for review and they'll drive it for a year. After a year, let's do a long-term report on how good the car is. So I've got a couple planes and I might try that for a couple of my different planes and just kind of give a report on what I think of the plane, how it's worn, what's broke, what's not, how I've repaired it, and just kind of give you a rundown on one of my favorite planes. Today, if I'm able to do it, we'll be doing the F8F Bearcat from Flightline and Motion RCs. Here we are, as promised, with the uh, long-term report on the Flightline from Motion RC F8F Bearcat. This is one of my favorite warbirds. Um, little story behind it. When I first learned to fly warbirds and started uh, figuring out the whole landing thing because there's a technique to it, I had a FW190 that I totally destroyed a couple of times and I was looking for a plane that would be a good second warbird. And everywhere I read on RC groups, hobby squawk forums from Motion RC, everybody said the Bearcat. It has no bad tendencies. One of the things they liked about it, and I would have to agree, is you notice the landing gear are very far apart. They're way out on the wings. So when you're flying, there's no, or when you're taking off, there's no tendency to tip over on landing and stuff like that. And they were absolutely right. It's not like a Spitfire. Spitfire, the wings are in really close. And if you don't nail your landing or take off, you're scraping a wing. And even back in the real Spitfires, that was something they had to fight. But this one, the wide landing gear has been great. Um, and it does make landing and taking off very easy. Now, since this is a long-term report, let's uh, talk about how the plane has flown. I'm not kidding, I don't think I've managed to tip stall this thing one time. It just flies wonderful, it slows right down for takeoff, and takes a pretty good beating if you don't nail your takeoffs or landings. Uh, in a previous video, I think one time I uh, got the tail up too quick and drugged the prop on the runway, which you can see the uh, props have no yellow tips on them anymore because they just kind of wear off if you get the tail up too quick. So this is not one of those you want to get the tail way up high and try and do the scale takeoffs. You just barely let the tail come up and you hold it. Uh, a couple other things that I did, um, I think I have some cutaway video of it, but you can see in here the uh, radial engine on it was all black. And I just got some 50 cent paint from Walmart, believe it or not, that was like metallic silver or metallic gray. And I just lightly brushed it on there with a dry brush and gave it a little bit of a scale look. I'm not a scale nerd, but it was fun. I had nothing to do at night one day, and I said, let's try it. And it worked really well, so I'm very happy with that. Another little mod that I did, which I read about, is there's this tape piece that you're supposed to use to pull the thing up, pull the battery hatch up. I'm not a big fan of that, but I saw somebody got a tiny little piece of carbon fiber and an old gift card, this one from Amazon, and I just poked a hole in it, put a dab of hot glue on the top, so I have this nice little handle now to open my plane with, and it pops right down in and doesn't affect the flying. One of the other touches I did to it is you notice on the wings, I have a silver spot. That's because this is a blue plane. When you get it up in the sky and you're flying, a cloudy day, sunny day, it doesn't matter, this thing just turns to a big black shadow. So I put these pieces of silver on the top of the wings for orientation and it's really cool I don't know if you'll be able to see in the video when you go to make a turn those things flash and it literally looks like you got lights on the end of the wings very cool what I wish I would have done that I did on another plane instead of doing this it's too late now if I pull that off paints coming off I wish I'd have just took a small piece of silver and just run it along the leading edge of the wing it looks much more scale much more real and not quite as obvious what I'm trying to do another mod I did is I added my little pilot. I love those little ducks. I pick them up at EAA every year. They're a dollar a piece. So you'll notice if you see some of my videos, a lot of my planes have the little duck in there. And uh, he's a good pilot and he's done really good on this one. So what's broke? I've creased the tail a few times from where I flipped it on a landing because that's what we do. The biggest injury I had, and I think I even have video of it from a couple weeks ago when I was doing, shooting some videos, I came in a little hard and this particular landing gear just sheared right off on landing and it was a very simple fix the uh, you can see it on the wing 
there's a spot right there that whole piece broke I just gorilla glued it back on and then trying to cover up my work I just took some gray black silver paint or whatever mixed it up made it look like gunpowder and now that's just gun trails smoke trails from the guns trailing off the back of the wing so it kind of covers up the blemishes of the upgrades and then through here where the tape was that covers the servo wires same thing I just tried to match the paint as best I could it's just kind of a little more weathered now these landing gear are very big you can see there's a lot of leverage there and that is what fatigued this part here the landing gear where it broke is that fatigue from the the wheels you know we don't have a crystal a glassy smooth runway so that jarring is going to weaken that foam and it's right up on the edge and so that's probably what broke other than that I really can't think of any problems I've had with I do believe one of my flap servos the control horns on the flap actually came off one time in flight and I had a little bit of a handful getting it down but it was okay we got it down no harm done this is just a great flyer. Oh, a couple other things. I don't know if you can see it with the camera. Um, I had a LiPo alarm in all my planes. That's my analog telemetry. So when that goes off, it's time to land. The little blue box in here, you're not going to be able to see it. It's a kind of a servo place to gather all your wires. A lot of people on the flight line planes hate that thing. And thankfully, knock on foam mine has been solid I have not had one bit of problem with it whatsoever and I have also installed a gyro Gropner receiver in there instead of getting the Hobby Eagle gyros I had a friend with the Gropner radio and he sold me a couple of receivers that have the gyro so essentially I get AS3X off my Gropner radio which is kind of a spectrum thing you know anyway you get you get stabilization all in the receiver so that's been a really nice upgrade makes the flying a lot more fun um, other than that, I have to say, there really are no bad habits. This plane is just solid. It's a little heavy. Uh, so even on 4S at full speed, it's not going 70, 80 miles an hour. It's maybe going 50 tops. So it's very scale. Flies great. Flies inverted easily, even on low rates. So it literally is one of my favorite warbirds to fly because I know I'm, it's going to be hard for me to break it. So if you're looking for a warbird, especially a second one or a first one, I can't recommend this one enough. The motor does sound a little rattly, but it runs fine and flies fine, so I'm leaving it alone till something blows up. <laughs> so um, anyway, it's been a great plane. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a Warbird. I'm very happy with mine. So just a few small blemishes, a few small things I've done to it. I hope it might help somebody.